Now, I think this is going to be a really interesting video. I'm looking forward to this one. I hope you are too. The preseason tour is finished. Yeah, we've still got some of the preseason left. We've got games against Atletico and Rio Vallecano, but the tour is done. We're going to be flying back from Perth straight after that tour draw against Aston Villa. What I want to do in this video is talk about what I think has been Ten Hag's best 11 so far. From all the players that have played, everyone's got minutes apart from Garnacho, which is slightly weird. But uh, anyway, back to the team. And I want to run through who I think has been the best 11 and where I still see the weaknesses going in to the next week of training at Carrington, where Martinez and Eriksen come in, and also for more signings that need to be made. We know exactly what one we want. But I think you'll like this video. I will too. Make sure you please drop a like on it. And look, subscribe to United People's TV if you're new, man. Like This community is growing, but it's all just been built up to this season that's just about to start. All of it's a prelude to what's coming next. So make sure you stick around with it. But look, the preseason tour is done. I mentioned at the end of my match reaction there. Three wins and a draw. Lots and lots of positives to take in terms of the, how the overall team is building, the teamwork, the goals that we've seen. But look, the second half, we saw the weaknesses. Eh? The weaknesses got exposed. And we threw away a 2-0 lead. Now what I'm going to do is pull up the starting eleven from that game against Aston Villa. And I'm going to run through it position by position, have a little conversation about each spot, who I think settled well, who I think is very, really impressed, and who I think still has work to do. Heading into the goalkeeper position, we know full well that David De Gea is going to be our number one next season. Uh, unfortunately for him, those weaknesses got exposed against Aston Villa right towards the end. Stuck on his line for the equaliser. I think overall, De Gea has shown he can play out from the back with the ball. And I've... I've but he, obviously, it's not completely... He's not a, an Edison. He's not an Allison. But he can do it. And I've reiterated so many times that De Gea, back when he joined Manchester United, he was that sort of goalkeeper. It's like he got coached out of him. He needs to get coached back into him. He needs to command that area. It's always been a weakness of his game. But there's no doubt that De Gea is in our starting eleven for next season. Now, in terms of the defence, I think, for me... The biggest and most pleasant surprise of the preseason so far is either Martial or Delo, but Delo's been, I've been really impressed with him. So I'm going to have him down there as the right back, the best right back so far that what we've seen. I think the way he's played in his involvement in the build-up, also his defensively looked pretty sound. Delo has surprised me in all the right ways, and I think he's probably surprised a lot of you. So for me, I'm going to put him down there as our best right back option at the moment. And I think we saw from Wamba Saka against Villa, not like we needed to see that against. Uh, Villa, we knew it anyway. It, it suits all parties, I think, if he gets sold. That's why I think so anyway. But in terms of this back four, Delo, I think he will start that game against Brighton. And I think he will be playing alongside Aaron Maguire. Aaron Maguire, a player who's been booed. Honestly, for the life of me, I don't care how much you criticise or dislike a player. Just find booing weird. Just the whole concept of booing is just weird. And I, I've, been, I've heavily criticised Maguire. I think Maguire has played a slightly better and improved as the preseason has gone on. And there's no doubt, I think, that him being partnered with Martinez will, I think, make him a slightly better player. And I think Maguire, well, I don't think Maguire, Maguire has been backed by Eric Ten Hag vocally quite a lot during this preseason. I expect Maguire there to start against Brighton. I don't expect him to start against, alongside Victor Lindelof. And Victor Lindelof, man... The weakness has really got exposed against Villa. I think playing alongside Shaw, they exposed each other. But Victor Lindelof, we know exactly what's going to happen for that game against Brighton and for basically every game this season. He is not going to be in there. And that is going to be Lissandro Martinez. It's exactly why we've signed Lissandro Martinez. I'm probably going to say that this area of the pitch has probably been the, the place where we've been most exposed during the preseason tour. But certainly in that left centre-back position. And Lindelof is going to be a good, and that's Maguire, is going to be a good squad option. It means that our, fir our four first choice centre backs are going to be Martinez, Maguire, Varane, and Lindelof. Will Varane stay fit? Well, that's the big question. But for me, it's going to be those three there. And this, I think, is probably the most interesting conversation because I didn't really expect Tyrell to be that good that quickly. And at the same time, or maybe I did expect it from Luke Shaw. But I, honestly, the, I think the way that this preseason has gone, the way that everyone has played, I would do this. And I would be surprised if Eric Ten Hag would, didn't do this as well. 
I think that will be the back five that will start against Brighton. I think it'll be De Gea in goal, Maguire and Martinez with the two fullbacks being Malasia and Delo. And I think that would be the right thing to do. I think they've shown that they're the better fullbacks inside the system. I've done a video separately on, on the importance of the fullbacks in the system. Shaw's got an uphill battle on his hands. He had it, well, he was supposed to have it when Tedes came in, but he didn't really do anything. But Malassi is really not here to mess around. He's here to take that starting spot from him. And I think he'll get it for the game against Brighton. Let's see what happens. But I think that left-hand side there of Malassi and Martinez is going to work so much better than what we saw in that game against Villa with Lindelof and Shaw. I'd be very surprised if we saw Lindelof and Shaw start a game together in the season. Let's move on to midfield. So many questions in midfield. This was a team that started against Aston Villa. And i tell you what, Fred, well, that's McTominay. We'll speak about him next. What do you think about Fred's performances? It's kind of surprised me a little bit that he's effectively operating inside this role. Now, on paper, it might kind of line up like that, right? On paper, 4-2-3-1 per se. But as the game goes on, we've seen it, it kind of drifts more into that with Fred sitting as the holding midfielder kind of on his own. And I think he's been doing an okay job there. We all know that Frankie de Jong would do a better job there. And ultimately, that's what we want. And that's about, about Jesus, man. How much is this team crying out for Frankie de Jong? Every game you look and just go, oh, man, it would just be so much better if, it, if that was Frankie. And that's why Eric Ten Hag has identified him to be the missing piece to that puzzle. I think he wants that to be uh, in an ideal, ideal world, right? Ten Hag gets everything he wants. It's probably going to be that. The starting position in that one there. Up here, it's going to be that. And probably, I mean, you could put McTominay down there as well, maybe. As a third choice, but you can probably put McTominay up there as a third choice too. And I think you've got Bruno there as your basic number one, which I'll go on to next. But I think in an ideal world, we get De Jong there and Fred is his backup. In an ideal world, I think it will probably be Ericsson going up there. Spoiler alert for what's coming next. But I'll tell you, as somebody who just hasn't done enough so far in the preseason tour, McTominay, man. Both of these lads, I think you can have the same conversation about their performances. McTominay and Van Der Beek, in my opinion, have not done enough, anywhere near enough, to keep Ericsson out of that team once the season starts. So I would be very surprised if we didn't see a bit of this. Of course, that depends on how Ericsson plays. Let's see what goes on in these games against Atletico Madrid coming up. Real Velocano, how's his fitness, X, Y, Z. But given how I would say quite invisible the performances have been from Matomane and from Van der Beek together, Van der Beek had a good cameo, Matomane scored a goal. Overall, I think they've not done enough on this preseason tour to keep Ericsson from coming into that team. That's what I think so. And certainly when you do this and you compare it to how Bruno Fernandes has played, I've been impressed. It's what I've wanted to see, him being a bit smarter. Football IQ, I think he's raised his game in this preseason. It's amazing what happens when you get coached properly. Mm, who knew? Bruno Fernandes, he's one of the first names on that team sheet. He is, I think he's been really quietly quite impressive during this preseason. I've really liked what I've seen from Bruno. I think Eric Ten Hag would have liked what he's seen from Bruno. And for me, Bruno is the only guaranteed start. I suppose Bruno and Fred are. Bruno and Fred are pretty much guaranteed, I think, to start against Brighton. But may, Fred's not guaranteed per se because if we signed De Jong tomorrow, he wouldn't be in that 11. But Bruno definitely is. So that what I would presume it will be that back five there. De Gea with Delo and Malasia with Maguire and Martinez. Fred in the, if you want to call it the number six role, call it whatever you want. But a midfield three, I think of Fred, Bruno and Ericsson. And that front three there, that's the front three that we've seen a lot so far in this preseason. Marcus Rashford, if we're, if we're going to rank them, he's probably been the least impressive of the three simply because of how Incredible, I think Sancho and Martial both looked. But Marcus Rashford, I think he every, it suits that system. That, that, that system works well with those three players together. Sod knows how Ronaldo comes into this and doesn't just mess shit up. You know, he might be the greatest goal scorer of all time, but this is, is not in that system. He will have to goal hang and the team will have to play differently. Bruno will have to cover more space in and up here if, if we're going to have Ronaldo in there. But Rashford, for me... I think he starts that game against Brighton. I think so far he deserves that. I think he still needs to improve. So obviously, we saw the shooting in the game against Villa. That was a bit wayward. Poor body, poor body positioning. But I think Rashford's link-up play is going well. 
Uh, hopefully, he can continue to build that with Malasia. But I tell you, for me, probably the player of the preseason so far, I think it has to be Jaden Sancho. Now, that you might say, Sam, that's being really unfair on Anthony Martial. And I'll get into Man Anthony Martial next. But for me, Jaden Sancho is just... I cannot wait to see what he does in the Premier League next season. I think he's going to be such a baller, man. Such a baller. And I personally think that front, that front three is absolutely... It's a surefire to start against Brighton. I don't really care what, I don't really care what Ronaldo does. But now he can, say he comes back next week, he's training brilliantly, X, Y, Z, he scores a couple against Atletico Madrid, blah, 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 blah. I don't care. This preseason, we've seen something new and we've repeated good performances. We've repeated good goals, good teamwork, good movement, good energy, all from that front three. And Sancho, for me, just looks happy. Like he knows what he's doing. He's got real clarity. And look, Anthony Martial, it's either Anthony Martial or it's Diogo Delo in terms of the biggest and best surprise of the preseason so far. He looks good. Yeah, he might have not had the best of games against Villa, but no one really did. That. Let's be honest. No one really did overall. Martial's look good, man. I think he's thriving. It's weird, isn't it? That, that we all feel that competition is what drives everybody to be better, but it feels like Martial's the opposite. Whenever Cavani or Ibrahimovic or Lukaku or Ronaldo's come in and taken the limelight, it's not helped Martial. When he's got the focus and the spotlight on him, it's, he seems to play better. And I think from, I'd be very surprised if it's not that front four starting against Brighton. Rashford, Martial, Sancho and Bruno, they've started every game in the preseason, I think. They've certainly got the most minutes so far in the preseason. He's not really, Ten Hag's not really tinkered with that too much. He tried a langer, I think, once he started. He might, might have started a langer in one game. But he's kind of set. He feels like he's settled on that. So in my opinion, like there's been a lot of good things in this preseason tour so far. A lot of positives. Not all sunshines and rainbows. There are some weaknesses. And I think those weaknesses can be solved by putting this team out against Brighton. Martinez down there on the left-hand side. That as a, as a partnership down the left flank. That covers the weakness that we're going to have when we go forward and we press and the breast gets broken. There will be space in behind there. Malasia and Martinez are going to cover that a lot better than Lindelof and Shaw are. Uh, I'm still, we still, we obviously know we need that defensive midfielder, but we're, still, we're trying to sign one. We know that's a big weakness, but Fred's been doing okay. Won't be enough in the course of the whole Premier League season, though, for sure. And I personally, I'd be banking on Ericsson to go in there instead of McTominay or Van der Beek, neither of which have done enough in the preseason so far to keep him out of the team. I thought he was going to be a supplementary player for Man United next season. I might have got that massively wrong. But what do you think about that team? Would you be happy if that's the team that starts against Brighton? Look, maybe that would, maybe my opinion is going to change after we've played Atletico Madrid and Rea Radicano. But at the end of this preseason tour so far, that I think is the best 11 that we've had. And also, Martinez I'm bringing in there and Eriksen I'm bringing in there because I don't think Van der Beek or McTominay have done enough there. And I don't think Lindelof has done enough at left centre-back. That's why I'm putting those two names over. You can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Make sure, ladies and gents, you do subscribe to United People's TV. Why wouldn't you? It's a good community. Get involved. I'll see you soon. Let me know what you think about your 11 in the comments, though. <laughs>